What's up, Truth and Love? Welcome back to another segment of Let's Talk About It. The sermon today was part two, Grace for This, the ultimate gag gift. Sister Coleman, what'd you think of that title? I love that title. The God assigned grace. Grace. And we all have been assigned a gag gift yes. from God. Yes. Before we start, we were talking about different ways that they use the word gag in current culture. So maybe there were some raised eyebrows on where Pastor might have been going with that idea. Our very own Sister Coma is dressed very nice today. So I was telling her that the term that the young people use is gag. You are dressed nicely. So it can be a positive term or you can say that's gag worthy. So just want to throw that out there for those young heads, the new school. Um, but Pastor talked about the paradox of vision. So in 2 Corinthians 12, 1, it talked about um, that Paul, he was arrested in Jerusalem, and then he was threatened. There was threats of death, but God said he must testify also in Rome. How do we deal with the frustration of having the vision, knowing what must be done in our current circumstances? Ooh. Well, first of all, God does not give a vision without provision. And so once he give, um, once he give us a vision, he's already equipped us with everything we need to uh, move in that vision. Yeah. So, so he gives us the provision for yeah. the vision. So, so, uh, and that includes um, even the, the, the highs and lows, because there are going to be some highs and lows in the vision where um, things are made may not be favorable yes. you know uh uh paul dealt with a lot of things going on in his life but he because i believe because he was so in tune to the voice of god and and to god that when god spoke to him about his vision gave him the vision god the vision yes. came from god yes. and so then he was dealing with a lot of obstacles as he was moving in the vision and um and god you know gave him uh, a release to know that you know what even in your weakest place, you're strong in me. Amen. Amen. That I'm strong in you. Amen. Um, so Pastor talks about three things that we could do to maximize the next season. The first mm -hmm. thing was start. Second thing was stop. And third was continue. Mm. Mr. Coleman, can you tell us some things that we need to start, that we need to stop, and that we need to continue? Yes. We um, making sure that we start out when we start just stay committed, stay focused. Amen. Always stay focused in your commitment. Stay focused in, in um, keeping the main thing the main thing. Um, it doesn't matter what God has said. It if if it does no, it's not, doesn't do you any good to uh, to start something and then stop. Yeah. Because in the second um, the second point of stopping, he said start, stop, and continue. We don't want to start out something and then stop right. in the middle of it, never completing. And we have a lot of people who uh, do not complete assignments. There's right. no way that you win when you stop. Right. You have to continue. You have to start it. You have to keep that momentum. Keep your uh, focus. Keep your, your, your um, stay focused. Stay prayerful. Stay in worship. Do all right. of the things that you started doing when God gave it to you. Was excited about it? Yeah. For the most part. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. We're, yeah, sometimes we're not excited about it. God, uh -uh. you want me to do that? Uh -uh. <laughs> uh -uh. But, but he, he gave it to, he put it in us to start it. Uh, there should be no stop in it, but sometimes life happens and we do stop. We stop and we take a pause and we take a breather and we're like, I can't do this. And right. then God said, no, 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 continue. So if we, if we stay focused and listening to God, we'll finish our course. We'll run this race. We'll run it. We'll take all of the L's that we have to take and then we'll Ooh. get back up and then we're going to keep Ooh. moving. We're going to keep it moving. You hear me? Amen. Ooh. Amen. That makes me think of um, people with the gym, how they start the gym, and they're excited in January. They wait till January, and they're like, I'm going to get my new life going. I'm going to get snatched. And they go for maybe one or two days or a week, and then they're expecting to get those results right away. 
And then by springtime, everyone's falling off. The <laughs> gyms are empty again. So that kind of made me think about um, the scripture and the word where it talks about putting your hand to the plow mm -hmm. and then stepping away or taking it away. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the obstacles that cause people to put their hand to the plow of purpose or put their hand to the plow of the vision and then causes them to step away? Oh, you know what? I just heard that word, distractions. Mm. Distractions take them off focus. I, you know, I was going to the gym too at one time. <laughs> I was gag, gag. <laughs> I was I was going to the gym and and you know what I I kind of you know I it was a a good idea. It was a great idea in theory. I, in theory, in theory, you know I was on purpose. I bought yeah. me some some workout clothes yeah. and some workout uh, sneakers and and I was just so excited and I did I I, I did it for about six months. I mm. did faithfully. I was faithful and um. And then, I don't know, just something randomly just took me totally off focus. Wow. And, and, and it was so easy. And then it, it was down from three days a week to uh, two days a week. And then, and if I went, then it was, you know, it wasn't an hour and a half or hour. It was, you know, 15 minutes on the what? treadmill. And, and so, and then it, was, it got easier and easier to back away from it. Mm. So the thing is to make sure that, we keep the main thing, the main thing. Okay, the goal is set the goal. If we've set the goal, God has given us a vision. We write it down because that's what the word tells us to write it down. So you're always looking at, okay, what's the vision? And we remember the vision and we remember the steps because God don't just give you a, a, a vision without, you know, giving you some insight on what to Amen. do. And right. I found that and you will find too that as you go, he reveals it even the more it becomes clearer yes. as we go so yes. if I would have kept going I would have been down to the the weight that I wanted to be yes <laughs> but uh, it didn't work that way so I got to start over I got to start over and and um and and making sure that I stay focused don't let distraction come in because that's the number one thing I think that take us off um take us off focus uh distractions and then Pastor talked about um, where Paul went into this thorn that was in his flesh that he pr prayed to try to get rid of, but he didn't. Ultimately, he ended up embracing the pain. He ended up embracing this uh, antagonist, Ooh. you could say, of his purpose. Mm -hmm. And that just makes me think about um, where Pastor was talking about when you ask God to be used. Mm -hmm. Because we know that in his former life, he used to persecute the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then he decided to give himself over to the will of God. And Pastor said, we can't pick and choose how we want to be used. So how has that shown up for you? Ooh. Ooh. I mean, it's, it's easy. I, I, in my early Christian walk, I, I know I, I didn't think we were supposed to go through all of the stuff that we, went, <laughs> that we were going through. I didn't yeah. think that. I thought yeah. when you, once we gave our life to Christ, it's supposed to be just, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips. But this is not that type of walk. <laughs> Right. And um, so you don't get to you don't get to pick and choose, um, you know, you don't get to pick and choose because he tells us in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct us. But we don't get to pick and choose the direction that mm -hmm. we go. Exactly. We think we know our path, but he says he knows the way we go. And yes. if we follow him. So. Uh, so, yeah, if we are going to do it his way, we want God's results. This is what I want to say. It just if we want God's results, we got to do it God's way. His way. If we got to do it His way. Amen. Amen. Um, so there was these things that were the possible causes of his thorn. There was Paul's inner psychological struggles. So he had some opponents. There was Paul's physical afflictions, and there was demonic harassment. Mm. Now, when we experience these things, Pastor talked about having the permission to assault. Mm -hmm. God allowed those things to happen. Mm -hmm. Nothing can happen without his permission. And the plea for assistance. That was when Paul asked three times to please remove this thorn. Mm -hmm. And then the paired message of seeing that my grace is sufficient for you. My power works best in weakness. So on one side, he knows what he must do. He has mm -hmm. this gift from God. He's received greatly from him. Mm -hmm. Extravagant revelations. And mm -hmm. then on the other side, the enemy's been allowed to attack him. Mm -hmm. And then grace gives us divine enablement. So 
What do you think about the permission to assault? How do we process that as followers of Christ that the enemy has been given permission mm. to assault us? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that's a hard one to process. Ooh. That is a hard one to process yeah. because um, when you're thinking of you being a child of God and, yeah. and, and that he loves you and that, and, and sometimes we'll find ourselves, I don't say this anymore. Why are you allowing this to happen? Mm. And we get stuck in this. Why, if you love me, God, why would you allow them to treat me that way? If you love me, God, why would you allow me? And I had this conversation with God. So (laughs) why would you allow this, God? But you know what? What I learned was all of that. He said that in all things, yea, in all things, yes, all things is working together for my good. It may not feel good. And, and sometimes those things didn't feel good because mm-hmm. then I had to look at me. I had to, you know, go inside of me and say, okay, why am I, why am I reacting to uh, this? When I, I, I said to God, Lord, I want you to use me. Now, I'm trying to pick and choose in the manner in which he used me, though. Yeah. He's trying to <laughs> use me to pull out some stuff in me yeah. that needs to come out. And I'm saying, not like this here. Let me pick the way that right. that, that you. So <laughs> that, I be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I want to be comfortable while yeah. you're doing this here. This yeah. I got to go through the process. And it's not a comfortable walk. It's not all the time comfortable going through a process. Because, you know what? We didn't get like this overnight we didn't get in this mindset (laughs) our mind didn't get like this overnight the way we think the way we behave our our character and how we we didn't get like this overnight so it's going to be a process to get us through uh you know to that place that God is trying to take us to (laughs) yes but you said an important word process Paul went through the process. Mm. He went through the process of pain. He went through the process of loss. He went through the process of people attacking him, antagonizing him. Pastor mentioned there were people who had shaved their head and Mm. band together. I was like, you a false teacher. We don't like you. And just to experience that everywhere Mm. you go, every time you go to do God's work, you're being antagonized just to get through that. Um, so I wanted to close us out with the scripture that Pastor gave, 2 Corinthians um, chapter 9, verse 8. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. So in his grace being sufficient, we have all that we need. So we're trusting in him for his divine enablement through grace that we, yes. like Paul, can carry out our purpose, that we, like Paul, can pursue with passion mm. everything that he's putting us to do in spite of the antagonist. Amen. So truth and love, give us some comments. Give us some feedback. We want to know what you thought about this gag gift. <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Let's Talk About It. Here comes the church. <laughs>